Hello everyone and welcome back. Welcome to my another video and it's getting a little interesting because we have covered this thing and then 12 factor app this is also covered. I mean we whatever the last set of videos we talked about that is all 12 factor app and making your express type script a simple app production ready by introducing the logging by introducing the PM2 process manager by adding all the required things of uh, having the 12 factor app by splitting the configurations config management where you are actually managing the environment variables either using ci cd pipelines and then we also talked about uh, how we can segregate uh, these different stages like the build build deployment and the testing all these different stages stages and we talked about the github actions like how you can write a github actions to build and deploy your application simply build because currently we don't have any deployment platform we are just doing a building and testing and installing so we have done that now this is what we are going to talk about so because the the microservice you are going to write you may choose express typescript if you are good at it because otherwise if you if i want to have a typescript flavor and i just wanted to go ahead with the nest js then uh, what I will do is first couple of videos I'm going to talk about a simple nest JS application we already have this monorepo setup so what we can do is we can start talking about this nest JS baseline okay so in the nest JS we are going to talk about the basic fundamentals like let's say you are just you just know express typescript nothing else but this is the right opportunity for you to learn the nest.js i won't be teaching you the nest.js but i may be providing the resources so you can take a look onto that but uh, yes uh, building your application or by building your services or microservices or the api platform using nest.js is really helpful because it is providing you the opinionated approach where you can create a controller services uh, factories and uh, middleware pipes all the cost custom logics you might have heard in the angular because it is using the modular approach angular is a front end don't get scared but it uses these angular core libraries underneath to create the modules to create the dependency injection to create a separate services then controller then there is a middleware then pipes factories interceptors because it is providing you the structure there is a module module can control module contains your controllers, services, providers, middlewares, all those things. So it is giving you the fixed structure which each and every developer in your uh, team can follow. And you can write the best code out of it. Okay. So that's what we are going to discuss in this. How we can baseline our Nest.js application. And then we can build a simple auth application. Simple auth app to just give you the feeling, okay, this is how the Nest.js building blocks really connect together. This is how you create a service dependency, inject that service inside a controller. Inside controller, this is how you define the APIs like HTTP GET, PUT, POST for the authentication. Then you might be integrating this thing with the database also. In the database, you are doing a reading and writing the data to the Postgres using TypeORM, SQLize or maybe using Mongoose. Who knows okay so that's what we are going to talk about in these two videos hi everyone and welcome back welcome to my youtube channel and in this playlist we are covering the modern stack development we already covered uh, node.js express typescript and now we are moving forward with the four new set of videos which will talk about building rest apis using nest.js building uh, GraphQL APIs with the Nest.js and then gRPC, TRPC stuff. These are the four primary videos I will be covering in the next four videos. So th the first one is all about Nest.js. So Nest.js, I am expecting that you are not totally new to that. Nest.js is the API framework, same as Express and really very popular. So if you are really into backend and haven't explored Nest.js, then first thing you should do is you should learn Nest.js and then i can help you to build a simple full stack application with the nest.js as an api backend which can expose either rest api or the graphql apis and then you can have your front end running through the nextjs or react 
so what i'm going to do is this is what we are going to build this is a purely simple nest js api so we are going to build a nest js api platform that is just doing a simple CRUD operation but here it talks about okay building all these nest js modules controller services and dtos it's a end to end the whole implementation so i'm going to talk about each and everything with the minute details so just follow along with me i already have this uh, content so i will be just using the same content but the content is same here we are going to use a monorepo and we are going to create these packages in the just same folder structure and then you will understand okay how to write a simple uh, basic implementation in the nest yes nest yes is actually api platform and we will be using the monorepo and the workspace so we are going to create a logger package and all those packages will be used by nest.js application so i don't cover like a basic hello world and all i just cover the production ready things like here we are to have the complete uh, pnpm uh, mo workspace and the nx monorepo tool and here we are creating these tiny packages which will be used by my nest.js application so i'm going to cover all these things together and then in the next video i'm going to build an authentication service using nest.js and all these things combined so this is what we are covering because we have already covered uh, express type script you already know how to build the apis now you start exploring the nest.js world how to build the apis there once you are familiar then we can build some custom custom implementation like let's build a simple authentication service using nest.js and then after that we will just talk about the same services using graphql okay so let's get started we have created in the last video this, this this is the simple application we have created now in this video we are going to create some packages so that those packages we can use in all the other demo applications which we are going to build because all these demo applications are going to use uh, database connections configurations or logger module all these features so instead of duplicating these uh, this particular code what we can do we can create these reusable packages here those packages we can use in all the demo applications which we are going to play uh, in this so this is actually a monorepo and we are using nx on top of uh, that monorepo tool so this is a sorry this is the pnpm workspace and we are using this monorepo tool nx so that uh, we can automate lot of lots of things and all these scripts are like cached when you do npm run build all those things you can configure through nx json so this is like a baseline project we have created now it's time to create some packages and then start talking about some of the nest.js advanced features with the example applications like obviously we cannot talk them uh, talk about them theoretically we need to do some hands-on to understand those advanced topics okay so let's create uh, packages here what we can do is we can create two packages one is let's say here we can create a uh, app config or app database So what we are going to do is all our nest.js applications are going to have a database entities and all and nest.js already provides this implementation using nest.js uh, type ORM like you, you can use nest.js type ORM or any other different ORM solution here we will be focusing more on to the nest.js uh, type ORM to deal with the database and nest.js config it also provides its own implementation of a config module We'll just create these two packages uh, with our custom implementation because here you are passing all the hard coded values we can use the config module config module will be injected and we can uh, initialize this uh, database module dynamically using type or a module dot for root async so here in the first module we are going to talk about dynamic module and we can just uh, do a simple implementation uh, in the database package so what we are trying to achieve here is we already have a rest apis right now let's say if i want to implement a nest.js type orm postgres implementation for rest api development for the demo i will be adding the nest.js type orm module will be doing a type orm module dot for root somewhere in the code and i will be doing the same thing do, uh, replicating the same code everywhere in each and every different demo application 
so instead of that i can create uh, this simple database and we need to have a simple package json npm init that will give me a default package json okay so here is app config now uh, what we are planning to do we are going to create a package that can be added as a dependency in my application this is how uh, this is how these packages really works and this is a pnpm workspace so you create a package and add that dependency in your application so here you can create all these reusable packages config module logger module database module send grid module or elastic search module all these modules which can be created as a reusable package and that can be added as a dependency to any of your application which which we are you going to use for the demo okay so app config app database so what i will do is i have already shown this demo implementation in my all last three or four full stack clone applications but here again what we are going to do is we will just set up a simple package json so here let's say app database here we are going to use nestjs type orm so here it will be what is the scope for the root package json i think it's root here what we can do is inside this let's use this as a nestjs okay we should not use nestjs because nestjs is external package scope we can just to use dev database okay Similarly, there is another uh, package we are going to create in the config. So config module which is going to populate the process.env uh, into our, our services that is going to be done through the config module. So here also we are going to create a simple package JSON. That package JSON will be just providing us all the data. So here I will just create a package JSON and here it is dev config let's see all the dependencies what we need or not microservices we don't need config code testing just like if you want to write some types uh, some tests cases then you can use it so this is the config package and here we can see our config and uh, database package is available now we will add the rest of the configurations ts config and just config and the source folder because these, these are like simple type script packages now you are just going to create a nest.js module that is different thing but they should be able to compile their code so there is a ts config and just config for the tests this is a package json ts config which is going to look for the source and inside this we will be creating our module so inside this we are going to create index.ts Right. when you build this using ts config will be using uh, to build this we already have a typescript dependency so when you do npm run build it will look for the source folder and it will create a build this is how all the typescript based application works right you just have a ts config uh, typescript compiler configuration when you do npm run build it will use tsc to build the code and give us the build output it's basic thing i hope everybody knows about it index.ts and here we are going to create a config module what this config module is about if you look, in, look into nest.js uh, documentation what this con config module provides it reads your .env file and put all those variables into process.env let's say I am using elasticsearch or database Th there you need database username, password, port, host, port right so how your code will receive that you need to pass a .env right .env and either you can use a .env module which will read .env file and that will put all the .env variable into process.env and in your code you already referring the db host port using process.env.db host process.env.db port right this is how you are able to access all the variables so this is either you can use uh, existing module provided by nest.js which is simple nest.js config or we can write our simple tiny package which is also doing the same thing but in just a different way so what it is doing is uh, here in the config module 
we will define our interface config.default default.ts here we are going to create interface and config.default so I'm using this uh, package in mostly all my applications so let's say what we are putting inside a config default we can just say for authentication google swagger we can keep and database these are the minimum uh, variables i need for my application db host port and now i will be creating config module and config service these are nest.js service and nest.js module config.module.ts most of uh, you guys if you are my following my videos then you are already aware about this you can skip this video here i'm just creating these two packages those packages i can use in my application so config module and config service config module is config service is going to populate the config data so i will just explain my config service and config module how we are using it so we just need to do pnpm install either we can do it at the root so it will install all the dependencies which are available in the package json each config is not in the npm registry okay we might be adding a dependency somewhere okay i got it so here in the database i have a dependency added which is it should be dev config So these database package these packages are also dependent on one another so if you see the database this is the config package and this config package is added in the database package how we are adding the dependency just by adding the namespace dev config and you can just specify the version name or just put a asterisk like this that is also enough it will add the config dependencies in the inside the database uh, package so we are talking about app config here we have some default interface like these are all the variables we are using in the application uh, google config elastic config we don't need i will remove the the con uh, the interfaces which we are not using in application we are just using database database configurations host port process environment variable and swagger credentials okay and inside config service we need to clean up things which we don't need okay and you can see what this config uh, looks like this is just a simple es6 service what it is doing is it is putting all these things inside our this dot config object and what this config service is returning this dot config object this dot config equal to data the default config data otherwise it is going to load from the environment variable you need to call it and what this method will do is it will put all your environment variable this whole object inside config right and here inside this module we are calling this load from config this is like uh, this is the way how we create a providers config factory provide and use factory here we created the instance of the class load from env and returning the config okay maybe if you are looking at this as an SGS advanced video and you might not be able to understand this syntax it's just a way of creating the providers in the nest.js what we are doing is i'm creating this provider this is a simple service and inside a use factory i'm just returning this config object and the config factory is a part of provider so i'm passing it here so this is my config module so here in, inside my index.ts i can export all those things so that at other places we can use it config module service interface and default and we can build this module from here npm run build what it is building it is building this package using tsc if it is built successfully then we are good now we can add the database module right so that is the next thing and what the database module will do here also we need to create uh, all these dependencies here we already importing the config module so what the database module will contain here this is how we are creating 
the how this is how we are creating the or registering the type or module so we are just creating a wrapper on top of type or module because this config module we are going to pass inside database module to initialize this database module dynamically because we don't know the what is the database host port and all the configurations we are going to inject the config service or config module uh, in this module so type or mod type or module dot for root can be done at runtime by passing the config service config service will contain all the database host port might be we would be able to see it something here if it was talking about it looks like it is not talking about that thing it's all about how we can initialize the database module dynamically not by just passing okay here it is so this syntax if you are able to understand this syntax right now that is fine otherwise i will be explaining this uh, later what this type or module is type or module somebody really built this it's just a wrapper somebody wrote this library and this for root and for root async there are two versions of this module for root where you are just passing all the credentials like whatever you have and for root async this is a dynamic initialization asynchronous initialization of type or module you are injecting the config service you through the config module and through the config service you are getting all these variables the dialect host port username password and all here we can just use the url and put all those things inside a single postgres database connection url you can pass the entity synchronize true and false right so we can create this uh, a wrapper on top of this uh, dynamic module right what we can do is for root async and then there is already we are using is for root for root is a method which we are using uh, if we already have all the variables but obviously we need to depend on some config service to pass those variables because we won't be having that handy it will be injected dynamically through some config service and for that we need to use for root async okay so this is the for root async this is sqlize module and this is sqlize module dot for root async that is also when uh, these are like two different variations of uh, initializing the type or a module for root async we have like this for root and at the bottom we have for root async and here you are just passing the the name of the connections factory and inject so here we are going to inject the config service which we have just built and if you look at the config service it has this configuration variable it is returning me it is giving me this database that is giving me the url object right database url so you need to put that that in the env and we should be able to initialize the database module so okay this is app config now in database we are going to so have the same thing package json here we are dependent on the config module just config ts config and inside source we are going to create a db module or you can create a db interface and db service and inside index.ts export everything from db module everything from database module okay now we will start adding things inside our uh, database module this is the database interface this db config is nothing but having the entities all the entities as an array and inside database module I will use the existing code because I have discussed about this code many times and here we are talking about the baseline I will be explaining how we are doing the dynamic modules later but here this is we are getting all these things from the dev config this is how we are importing the configurations uh, from the config package which we have created so these two packages are interdependent And here we are what we are doing now if you look into this code uh, 
nicely we have created a custom database module you can say custom module which we can execute by calling db module dot for root for root is a sync static method so i can call db module dot for root i can pass this db config db config contains the entities entities is an array of all the uh, type rm entities we have what this module is returning if you see it is returning type rm module dot for root async right you can see here type rm module dot for root async this is the same code which we have seen like how we can do the dynamic initialization of type rm module when you are injecting the config modules a config module has a config service and all these connection options like the url uh, we are getting from the config service so here we are passing config service and db config db config is the variable get connection options here we are just calling this config service to get the database url and then this is the database connection options for the type or module which we are passing the entities synchronized true false and logging true false same if i talk about what all parameters we are passing i will just zoom this in i'll go to the top so here you can see all these things i can uh, move inside of one single variable url then i'm passing entities synchronized true and false okay so i mean we have only the postgres connection so this is how we are returning the postgres connection detail type is postgres url is a single database url keep connection alive true ssl will be unauthorized true reject unauthorized true uh, false if you are if you are using some aws rds or from heroku for local it can be ssl false that's it so this is our db module and here this is how we are exporting so how would i use this db module and the config module in my service right to use the config module i need to populate all these values in my application so i will go to app package json and here i can add these modules so these modules start with the dev database for now let's say and here dev database and then there is another package we have dev config and now let's see if i build this uh, project npm run build what it will do is it is going to build these two dependent packages you can see nx is waiting for one dependent project task one before the build completes it will wait and then it will build this own projects then it is building the first dependent packages on which it is dependent so here this is the the use of this workspace that you can create a package and can link them and add the dependency without even publishing them so this is how we are doing config and database we have added i added this because i don't want to write type or a module dot for root async 10 different places on 10 different applications i will just use the db module dot for root whenever i wanted to use this connections so let's say if we want to add this dependency and i wanted to use this what we will do source app module here i have created a lot many folders just to show the demo i can just delete this for now domain module so i will create a domain module which specifies the dependencies module and inside this module we can just import uh, whatever we want so this is import then we have providers then we have controllers if we have any and then export class domain module and this domain module you can import in your app module this is how the packages works right the module works there is a one root module and you need to import all the sub root modules like sub modules inside this root module like domain module shared module score module all you are going to put in here and inside this domain module here you can you can import your database module so here i will do is db module i need to do pnpm install so i can get all the dependencies resolved first of all it's better if i just do import db module from
dev database so here i can just do is db module dot pour so there are some methods exposed by db module why it's not showing db module dot pour root right this is the method we have created and here you can pass the entities do we have any entities created my TypeScript compiler is just like cloak crawling it's not showing me the options so here it is taking entities as an options right this is how we are going to initialize our database database connections right this is how we are initializing the type orm uh, database module and then whatever the entities we are going to create let's say we talk about this simple user here we will create a user controller user service and inside user service we can inject the repository for the user so let's say i will create a user entity user entity.ts i will create all these in the same folder user controller user service user controller user service and then user dto user response dto what else is left user module we are not talking about any other building blocks we are just talking about the controller service uh, modules and uh, if how we are importing and exporting the modules so db module is external and here we can talk I can create a simple uh, user entity so user entity will just create a type rm entity and then we will write the services in simple controller we will also walk we will also talk about simple crud api maybe simple get and post how it really works end to end with this setup okay so let's add the entity what we need to do is uh, here we are creating a simple entity and we are going to use simple type orm entity and here we can pass the entity name is users and then it will be simple class export class users entity extends the base entity let me check if we have nest.js type rm added in this package okay so that we need to add that's why it is not importing all these things for me so we'll go to this application pnpm add nest.js type rm type rm and i think there is a pz these packages we need to add into this application so i can see all of these are added and i should be able to get everything like these annotations will start working okay, still typescript is little slow sometimes so what we will do is i will try to import this type from type rm all these attributes and then here we are going to have a couple of attributes about uh, users so we are just writing a simple user cred let's say id email and username i'm not writing a authentication api username we don't need to use unique length uh, is 255 email username and that's fine and there are some updated at and created at column so this is simple entity and what we are going to do we will just create a simple uh, crud operation simple one simple api controller here we are talking about the advanced stuff so i won't be talking about a very basic thing because it's just an entity and here we are going to create a simple controller so uh, i mean just a simple api is how we create if we talk about a simple nest yes here in the fundamentals what all we do is we create the services controllers and all so if you look at the into this this is how we create a simple controller right that controller and we define these annotations that will 
convert into the API route. So this is API get, put, post, delete. All these uh, you can define. So it's just a simple controller we have created. So I will just copy this inside our controller. User controller. So the annotation is users. This is user controller. Get and uh, here we can just say what are we expecting find all it means we just need to call the service so here we'll be doing constructor injection using uh, we'll be doing a dependency injection of the service so we need to create a service so if you look into this what all the other things are you can create a provider and there are many ways of creating a provider like you just create a simple service something like this so here inside our user service And then you define all your methods like get put post like whatever you are doing and here we are going to inject the repository because we are using type ORM and here we can just define all these methods async fetch users and here we will get the type ORM repository for accessing the users data so this is how our simple user service really works. So we will inject the user entity inside the constructor. So this is how we are going to inject the repository. With all missing imports. This is users entity. Add imports and then how we access the repository. This is how we access the database. What we will do is simply return await this dot repository user repo dot find find and we are just passing empty that means we want to return all the users from this so this service first we are injecting the repositories inside a service and then controller is accessing this, this service by dependency injection so here we are doing private read only dependency injection of this service and now this service can be accessed in any of these methods what we can do is simply return this dot service this dot user service dot fetch users and we need to await this because this is a sync method it's going to return promise of uh, user entity that is an array Right, so what we did is we just created a simple controller, user controller, and API is this is the API URL, and we did the constructor injection of the service inside our controller, and then we are calling the service method to get the data. Now, what all other things you can add on top of this? I mean, there are many things we you can do if we are using Swagger. You can add the API annotations, API tags, and all. So here I can just use API. For that, I need to add a nest.js swagger. So a couple of packages I need to add for exposing these things to the swagger. Nest.js swagger, I remember, and then swagger UI express. Let me think what it was. Swagger UI express. This was the other package. And so we need an SJS swagger, SJS swagger UI express. And we can create a swagger module, like swagger module is something which we need for exposing the API docs to everywhere, right? So I will just use my docs. I will explain what I'm doing and we are doing these things everywhere inside source. I will just add a docs, which is using swagger config. This is user service, Swagger interface, and this is a Swagger uh, .ts. Here we are using going to use Express Basic Auth to protect our API docs. npm add Swagger Basic Auth, and this is dev config. So this is just creating a simple document. And if you look into the docs, how we are using Swagger, then it's the same thing. Uh, let me just see uh, this is open api right introduction 
this is how we are creating a simple document and this is how we are setting up swagger earlier before these things came into the picture uh, exposing the api docs just through the code is really very hard now it is very easy i have talked about this next just swagger module in many videos won't take much time here so here we are creating a document and then passing the config app and config to the create document method once you get the document you can just do a swagger module dot setup pass your app instance and the document and it will set up this uh, swagger docs on the ui like when you do forward slash docs you would be able to see the swagger docs generated for your application like something like this so you can do lots of things on top of that here we have created a simple swagger module and that we need to register in our module app module so this is our main.ts root file where we are creating our application so here we will create a document call this create document method from the swagger and we will pass the app instance you can see what it is doing with the app instance it is it is passing the same app instance here swagger module dot create document app instance and all the options and it is setting up this uh, swagger docs on this docs route so when you hit a forward slash docs you should be able to see the api docs for your controllers which you have created so here i have created a user controller here i can use now some of these swagger stuff so api tags api tags is users i'm talking about user specific apis so i can just specify okay what is my api tag and lots of things you can do in the controller i will talk about uh, some of them here if we talk about the nest.js building blocks what all the things which you need to create a simple api if let's try to document those and try to understand for simple api you need you need to understand the modules you need to understand controller what they do you need to understand services and the dto's with the dto's you also need to understand validations how the validation pipe works in nest.js and then a controllers uh, how we are defining the routing dependency injection and for basic CRUD operation you just need to understand how nest.js type ORM works we are using db module right now to access the the user repository so if you see here in the domain module inside user module we are going to create there we will be using this type or a module dot for feature i will just use a module because this module will, will get added in the domain module so here i will be using imports adding all my controllers services right controllers providers and here i will add a user controller here i will add sorry here i need to add a type or a module because here i'm trying to access the user entity so you just need to provide more feature and uh, which entity you are going to access in this module is user entity and then controller which is user controller and here we are talking about the provider so user service and an export also if you want to export this so other other modules can use it we pass user service and then export class user module so there are other things also these are just like a building blocks which you need which is controller services uh, modules and then this user module will get added inside a domain module user module you can import this tv module here we are we can pass a user entity and inside domain module we are accessing this user entity by injecting the repository in the service right and inside our controller we can talk about the validation pipes so controller annotation we are using the users and then there is another thing is use pipe so what happens if you if you remember how we used to do in the express is we define the express routes and for validations we were using joy as a middleware which is validating the payload properties so similarly there is a validation pipe 
which does the validations of your payload which is coming from the client so use pipe and here you can pass the the new validation pipe and here you can pass the different options what you want to allow the whitelist is true and transform if you if you want to allow the transformation of the variables which are coming as a query parameter body all this is allowed so if you talk about the validation pipe let's see here what it talks about uh, regarding the validation pipe so i think we will get up some validation pipes validation evaluate the input data if that is valid so these are some built in pipes uh, parse in pipe parse float pipe from the name it's clear if you talk about validation pipe you can define the validation pipe let's say because we need to define the type of your input if it is a boolean if it is a string if it is a number if it is a custom object which contains the properties of type enum type uh, array of object type number boolean all these we can do the validation using uh, this validation pipe what we are doing for that is just uh, you can create your custom pipe but default implementation you can use this validation pipe and once you have the pipe you can just once the pipe is enabled it will enforce that this id whatever you are passing into to the find one should be of type number and it's using parse int pipes let's say if you are passing one as a string it will convert that string into the number that is fine but numbering uh, string is expected like you can see if you try to pass abc so what abc cannot be converted into the parse int it will throw an error so it will give us 400 error for that okay what else we can talk about simple validation pipe i mean we just create these dtos either you can use a joy for the validation or a class validator what we generally do is we create these dtos and those dtos we in use in our controller methods okay i'm expecting in the body these three properties so i can just use a validation pipe and create a dto inside our dto dot uh, ts and use that class name so it will enforce that name should be of string age should be of number breed should be of string here you can also enforce other class validator criteria that is number is string is boolean is uuid all those things you can add on top of that so mind we it is doing yes here you can see so similarly like i can just create a simple dto user dto what this user dto will do is create user dto let's say that will enforce here we need to use class validator and transformer i think there are two packages which we need to add let me see what all packages are one is class validator and class transformer class validator and transformer so these two packages should be enough we can also add uh, other packages which are required which we didn't add so that is express sometimes for the typings we use express helmet for security and i need uh, okay uuid also we need and we can also add the types for uuid let's uh we are fine with these and then here you can this dto can be used at the controller level because we have registered this validation pipe which will validate based on these dtos so here what i'm saying is body should be of that type so here create user dto that means whatever you are passing in the body should follow uh, the DTO validation criteria. What it is saying, it should have email of type string, uh, username of type string and define email username. I think we are using only these two parameters. Okay, so user controller, you just pass this DTO, this DTO will enforce the validations that okay, whatever the payload body you are passing, that should follow that criteria. Otherwise, it will throw the bad request 404. Sorry, uh, yeah, 4, what is a bad request? 401, 402, 403, 404 is not found. 
uh, so it will just throw the bad request so here we are creating this controller here also we can add lots of annotations to support uh, which support which is supported by nest.js and all these information will be exposed to our api spec like uh, api bearer auth what it will allow is it will allow your apis to pass the authorization token if this api is like protected okay similarly you can just define what is the http status code this api will return and what is the api created response so we can do lots of things i will be creating the dto for that user created successfully import or all missing imports similarly what api consumes api okay operation so what this api should do this is doing a create right let's say it is doing create okay we can have a two different methods one is doing okay and another method can be which is just creating the user so here i can say create which will uh, pass the body here we don't need to pass the body because here we are just doing find fetch users api consumes application json api okay response so because here what we are doing is we are returning the list of users so here we need to create a custom response dto for that so i will create that and we'll try to make it uh, nice apis with proper documentation api okay response created response because this is going to give us 201 it is create so here we need to create a custom type for it so what we are doing is we can create a response DTO inside response DTO we can define okay what it is going to return or ta -ta -ta -ta, we can just use this only export class create user response DTO I mean name can be anything and what we need to specify is because it will get a UUID id email and then there is a one more thing it will get is email and username these are the three properties we are adding api response property this is custom annotation to expose things to the swagger similarly here we use we will use the api property like okay this api spec is requiring these properties to be passed so this api property is email here we can add lots of validation is email which is provided by class validator api property we can import that is supported by nestia swagger so here it is username example of username is uh, dev and this is email test at the gmail.com both are required so we can add another uh, required criteria is defined so value should not be empty or undefined okay required is true so this is the body dto which we are passing to our controller and here we can use this response type so fetch all is going to return as an array array of uh, response okay api okay this is fetch all find all right so here and this is created response so it's going to return an object and here it is going to return an array so this should be api okay response and this is an array so we just put that inside an array because we are going to fetch user fetched successfully user fetch api and user created successfully which is creating a user and here we are going to pass uh, let's say fetch user similarly we are going to call create user Sim single user right and we are going to pass body create user is taking this uh, dto as an input so here there is an another async method create user and this is the DTO we will import this DTO and what we need to do is we are getting the 
we are getting the payload so what we can do return await this dot user repo dot save and we can just pass the payload that's enough to save the data in the database table so we are not talking about simple CRUD I'm just explaining more about the flow and what all things you needed to create all those things so user entity not the array so this is create and we are importing this controller in the user module so everything is imported here controller service user module we are importing back user module in the domain module what else we have we just uh, we can just start the application domain module which we are importing in the app module app controller main.ts let's see if i start the application we need the dot env right that is missing and how we are going to populate this dot env in the process dot env so we go to main.ts and i will use this dot env module and i will put dot env in my code base dot env because we need to have uh, database running some database running so we also need to have a docker compose file and all those stuff i will just create a simple docker compose file for now and env so let's say this is my env which looks like this it is going to talk to simple user api or test api okay it is going to run on 3000 let's say 3010 so main.ts all the environment variables will be populated here and here this is how we are starting the application so here it should be process.env.port otherwise use 3000 port or we can get the port also from the config service which we are importing from the config module we have lots of unnecessary folders but that is fine those are empty so we have docs, domain, here domain module and we have everything inside our users. So we have controller, DTO, entity, module and service. I think these all things are enough. What we can do is npm run start dev and let's see what happens. Uh, is it trying to bootstrap our modules in the same order? Okay, you can see there is an app module initialized, config module initialized. Type or a module will give, give error because the, our database is not up and running. Okay, so here I have introduced uh, Docker Compose and Docker Compose Override. I mean, you can put everything inside a Docker Compose YML also. And here I have Docker Compose Override and I can just do Docker Compose up. So that I can have a, just a single Postgres container. that is in the root okay so it has created this database test api and that is exposing 3 to port so we will use that same port here in the env of this application 5432 and i will restart my application let's cancel this task and npm run start dev so it should, it should start my application let's see okay you can see uh, now I can check the API endpoint also I think the port is different the port is 3010 3010 and you can see a simple API docs right I think I didn't put the controllers properly there should be two API endpoints domain user user controller this is first one is the get and second one should be post because it is doing create that's why we are using API created response here it is doing a simple get status code 200 and returning ok that's why we are using API ok response so here you can specify all the expected response status code that this API can return you can document all those things so all those things will be exposed in the swagger also you can see this API can return 200 and this is the data format and this API can return 
an object when you create a user so username and email you can see it has created this data in the database and i can just simply fetch it i mean that there is no magic right this can be done in the express same same or less number of lines of code but it's all about modularity and how we are approaching this and these are the dto's where all these three properties are required this is the create user dto right similarly you can define all the other api endpoints put delete and all we are not going through that so this is how you simply define all the some simple basic rest api with the postgres uh, and here we are using pnpm workspace and nx monorepo tool we have we have created database package and the config package so here we are focused only on the domain module right here we are injecting the type rm repositories and then then accessing the database through the repositories dot find dot save and here we are doing dependency injection of service inside a controller and putting all these things together inside domain module so all these things are bundled in the user module then user module is exported inside domain module because there can be user module uh some other module course module student module and all these modules will be added in the domain module domain module is a subroot module the domain module we are importing in the app module here you can import all the logger module domain module uh, shared module core module all the things so what we have covered in this video if you talk about uh, the nest js fundamentals simple overview like simple how we are creating a providers how we are creating simple module how we are creating controllers we haven't created a middleware or exception filters pipes and all i mean if you look into the documentation it's straightforward how we are creating pipes we are we just have used a validation pipe you can use parse int pipe if you want to allow like you can use parse int pipe for the query parameter where you are expecting a numeric query parameter then auth guard to protect the api endpoints exception filters to when you are sending an exception back to the client you can intercept the exception and you can customize the response status code and all so that we can do through just a simple exception interceptor so these all exceptions your apis can throw right bad request exception these are the internal exceptions that converts indirectly into a status code like forbidden uh, bad request not found exception uh, unauthorized exception and unprocessable entity exception conflict exception and all if guard interceptors and custom decorators we can create a custom decorator also so by default we use body to accept the payload body query to accept the query parameters and request and response to process the request object and extract something out of request here mostly we use all these things params to pass to access the path param like this is how we do in express request dot param request dot body request dot query request dot headers same thing we can do in controllers to get these things extract the headers extract the query param path param and body like uh, we are using to, if you want to extract the user somehow somebody some mechanism is putting user in the request object we can use annotation user custom decorator something like this and what that decorator will do is it will give you the user object which has it which is there on the request object and you can access the user object like this inside your controller this is how we are passing the data so this is all like simple uh, setup uh, pre-built setup and what we have added lots of things on top of the basic bare bone structure we have a swagger module database module config module added right and then we just created a simple crud operation with the help of typo rm nsgs typo rm we are using we are doing a payload validation using validation pipe and we are defining the dto's controller services uh, and modules and this is the module hierarchy you can also create a shared module core module and import all those modules in the app module similarly uh, we have these packages right i can create a app logger that's another package i will talk about like how we can use the built-in package built-in logger package from the nsgs or how we can create our own custom logger and how we can use that that i will talk next and then i will talk about the custom providers like what all different ways to do the dependency injection not just by creating an injectable class that is the next two videos we are going to work on okay 
let's see you in the next video i mean lots of things in this video was like already discussed but i cannot just skip and start using some existing project i need to explain things because there are different kind of audience i have mixed audience